Number the author 2018. Published by Oxford University Press. This is an open access article distributed under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution License. HTTP colon slash slash creative commons dot org slash licenses slash by slash four dot zero slash which permits unrestricted reuse, distribution, and reproduction in any medium, provided the original work is properly cited. DOI colon one zero dot one zero nine three slash chinesejil slash jmy zero one two the South China Sea Arbitration Awards, a critical study Chinese Society of International Law Zero Abstract. This critical study analyzes in detail the award on jurisdiction and admissibility of the 29th of October 2015 and the award of the 12th of July 2016 in the South China Sea Arbitration. After briefly introducing the project in the study and describing the background to and course of the South China Sea arbitration and the position of the Chinese government, the study moves to address one by one the following matters, jurisdiction, admissibility, historic rights, the status of China's Nansha Chengdao and Zhangsha Chengdao, the legality of China's activities in the South China Sea, due process and evidence. The study closes with the conclusion that the tribunal's many errors deprive its awards of validity and threaten to undermine the international rule of law. Included as annexes are five useful official documents of the Chinese government on jurisdiction, the two awards, China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea, and China's adherence to the position of settling through negotiation the relevant dispute between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea. Introduction 1. The land territory of the People's Republic of China includes the mainland of China and its coastal islands, Taiwan and all islands appertaining thereto, including Diaoyu Dao, Diaoyu Islands, Pangu Lai Dao, Pangu Islands, Dong Sha Chun Dao, Riders Islands, Shi Sha Chun Dao, Paracel Islands, Zhang Sha Chun Dao, including Maclis Field Bank and Scarborough Shoal and Nan Sha Chun Dao, Spradley Islands, as well as all the other islands belonging to the People's Republic of China. China is one of the countries bordering the South China Sea. China and the Philippines are states with opposite coasts. The distance between China's Zhangsha Chengdao and Nansha Chengdao and the Philippine Islands is less than 200 nautical miles. Since the 1970s, the Philippines has invaded and illegally occupied some islands and reefs of China's Nansha Chengdao, creating a territorial issue with China over these islands and reefs. In 1997, the Philippines began to unlawfully claim sovereignty over Wangan Dao, Scarborough Shoal of China's Zhangsha Chun Dao. With the development of the International Law of the Sea, a maritime delimitation dispute also arose between the two states regarding certain maritime areas of the South China Sea. China and the Philippines have reached agreement on resolving through negotiations and consultations the relevant disputes in the South China Sea. 2. On the 22nd of January 2013, invoking Article 287 of an Annex VII to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS or Convention, the Philippines unilaterally initiated compulsory arbitral proceedings against China, South China Sea Arbitration or Arbitration. The Philippines deliberately mischaracterized the territorial and maritime delimitation dispute in the South China Sea between China and the Philippines, and fragmented it into several isolated disputes, and camouflaged them as disputes concerning the interpretation or application of the convention. On the 19th of February 2013, the Chinese government unequivocally rejected the arbitration. The arbitral tribunal constituted at the request of the Philippines tribunal obstinately pushed forward the arbitral proceedings in disregard of the fact that it manifestly had no jurisdiction over the territorial and maritime delimitation dispute between China and the Philippines and of China's resolute opposition. On the 29th of October 2015, the tribunal rendered an award on jurisdiction and admissibility, award on jurisdiction and on the 12th of July 2016, an award on the merits and the remaining issues of jurisdiction and admissibility, award of 12 July. 3. 
Since the Philippines' unilateral initiation of the arbitration, China has consistently maintained its position of non-acceptance and non-participation, and its objection to the arbitration being pushed forward. Immediately upon the issuance of each award, China solemnly stated that the award is null and void and has no binding force, and that China did not and would not accept or recognize the award. 4. As a national learned society, the Chinese Society of International Law has been closely following the arbitration since the very beginning, as it involves a number of complicated and significant legal issues. Through a careful study of the tribunal's awards, the society has come to the view that the tribunal had no jurisdiction over any of the Philippine submissions, and that the awards were made ultra vires and are not well founded in fact or law, thus null and void. The tribunal erroneously exercised jurisdiction over territorial issues beyond the scope of the convention and over issues concerning maritime delimitation which China has excluded from the compulsory dispute settlement procedures under the convention, thus acting beyond the authorization of the convention. By disregarding the agreement between China and the Philippines on settling through negotiations and consultations all their relevant disputes in the South China Sea, the tribunal infringed the right of China, as a state party to the convention, to choose the means of dispute settlement on its own will. In respect of many issues, the tribunal's interpretation and application of the convention is flawed, and deviates from the intent of the state parties to the convention and the object and purpose of the convention. The tribunal erred in denying the existence of China's historic rights in the South China Sea and the legal status of China's Nansha Chungdao and Zhongxia Chungdao as archipelagos, also erred in qualifying Wangyandao of Zhongxia Chungdao and all islands of Nansha Chungdao as rocks that cannot sustain human habitation or economic life of their own and further erred in arbitrarily finding that China's relevant activities in the South China Sea were illegal. 5. These awards are not conducive to solving the dispute between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea, instead, they have complicated the related issues. They have impaired the integrity and authority of the convention, threatened to undermine the international maritime legal order, run counter to the basic requirements of the international rule of law, and also imperiled the interests of the whole international community. In order to make a contribution to the efforts to put the record straight, safeguard peace and stability in the South China Sea, and promote the international rule of law, the society considers it necessary to carefully study, from a legal perspective, the tribunal's awards and to lay bare the errors therein. 6. To this end, a research group of the society worked for more than one year, from September 2016 to December 2017 to produce this critical study on the awards, study. More than 60 experts in the fields of law, international relations, history, geography, etc., participated in this project. The Society also invited more than 20 experts of recognized competence from China, including Taiwan, Hong Kong and Macau, as well as other countries to provide guidance and review drafts on specific questions. This study, completed at the beginning of December 2017, is the outcome of these collective efforts and represents the position of the Chinese Academy of International Law on the awards. 7. This study consists of an introduction, chapters 1 through 7, and a general conclusion, Chapter 1 provides an overview of the background to and the course of the South China Sea arbitration, and summarizes China's position of non-acceptance of and non-participation in the arbitration initiated by the Philippines, and its position of non-acceptance and non-recognition of the tribunal's awards. Chapter 2 elaborates on the fact that the tribunal manifestly had no jurisdiction over the Philippines' submissions in the arbitration, and it acted ultra vires and violated the non ultra petty rule by dealing with issues not included in the Philippines' submissions. Chapter 3 shows that the tribunal failed to properly address the admissibility of the Philippines' amended submissions. Chapter 4 elaborates, with respect to the tribunal's decisions on the Philippines' submissions number 1 and 2, that the tribunal erred in addressing the relationship between the convention and historic rights and in denying the existence of China's historic rights in the South China Sea. Chapter 5 elaborates, 
With respect to the, the tribunal's decisions on the Philippine submissions number 3 through 7, that the tribunal erred in addressing the status and entitlement of the relevant features of Nansha Chundao and Zhangsha Chundao separately, thereby dismembering the two archipelagos, and further erred in its interpretation and application of law, especially the regime of violence under Article 121 of the Convention. Chapter 6 elaborates, with respect to the tribunal's decisions on the Philippine submissions number 8 through 14, that the tribunal erred in finding that China's relevant activities in the South China Sea were illegal and had aggravated and extended the disputes. Chapter 7 elaborates that the tribunal erred in procedural and of identity matters. The conclusion summarizes this study in broad outline and concludes that the tribunal's awards were made manifestly ultra vires and had no basis in fact and law and the Chinese government is well justified to declare them null and void. These awards threaten the international rule of law. Chapter 1 Background to and course of the South China Sea Arbitration and the position of the Chinese government. 8. On the 22nd of January 2013, the Philippines, invoking the convention including Annex VII there too, unilaterally initiated arbitral proceedings against China. The Chinese government made an unequivocal statement that it would not accept or participate in the arbitration. Such position of the Chinese government has been reiterated on many occasions. Despite China's strong position, the tribunal obstinately pressed ahead with the arbitral proceedings and, on the 29th of October 2015, rendered its award on jurisdiction and, in 2016, its award of the 12th of July. China has made clear its position not to accept or recognize these awards and has adhered to this position. This chapter introduces the background to and the course of the arbitration and the position of the Chinese government. I background. 9. Situated Ah background. 9. Situated to the south of China's mainland, and connected by narrow straits and waterways with the Pacific Ocean to the east and the Indian Ocean to the west, the South China Sea is a semi-closed sea extending from northeast to southwest. To its north are the mainland and Taiwan Dao of China, to its south Kalimantan Island and Sumatra Island, to its east the Philippine Islands, and to its west the Indochina Peninsula and the Malay Peninsula. China's Nanhai Iju Dao, the South China Sea Islands, consist of Dongsha Chun Dao, the Dongsha Islands, Shisha Chun Dao, the Shisha Islands, Zhongsha Chun Dao, the Zhongsha Islands, and Nansha Chun Dao, the Nansha Islands. See Figure 1. These archipelagos include, among others, islands, reefs, shoals, and kais of various numbers and sizes. Nansha Chundao is the largest in terms of both the number of islands and reefs and the geographical area. One, the distance from China's Zhongsha Chundao and Nansha Chundao to the Philippine Islands is less than 200 nautical miles. 10. Nanhai I Judao are China's inherent territory. The activities of the Chinese people in the South China Sea date back to over 2,000 years ago. China is the first to have discovered, named, and explored and exploited Nanhai I Judao and relevant waters, and the first to have continuously, peacefully and effectively exercised sovereignty and jurisdiction over them. China's sovereignty over Nanhai I Judao and relevant rights and interests in the South China Sea have been established in the long course of history, and are solidly grounded in history and law. Two. Eleven. As neighbors facing each other across the sea, China and the Philippines have closely engaged in exchanges, and the two peoples have enjoyed friendship over Gina Red Ions. There had been no territorial or maritime delimitation dispute between the two states until the 1970s when the Philippines started to invade and illegally occupy some islands and reefs of China's Nansha Chun Dao, creating a territorial issue with China over these islands and reefs. This is the core of the relevant dispute between the two countries in the South China Sea. Beginning in 1997, the Philippines started to make illegal territorial claims over China's Wangan Dao. China resolutely opposes the Philippines' invasion and illegal occupation of, or pretensions to China's territory. 
In addition, with the development of the international law of the sea, a maritime delimitation dispute also arose between the two states regarding certain maritime areas of the South China Sea. 12. With regard to disputes concerning territorial sovereignty and maritime rights, China has always maintained that they should be peacefully resolved through negotiations between countries directly concerned. China and the Philippines have reached consensus on resolving through negotiations and consultations the relevant disputes, which has been repeatedly reaffirmed in a number of bilateral documents. China and the ASEAN member states, including the Philippines, have also made solemn commitment to resolving their territorial and jurisdictional disputes through consultations and negotiations in their 2002 Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, DOC.3 Before the Philippines unilaterally initiated the arbitration, China and the Philippines had not yet had any negotiation designed to settle their relevant disputes in the South China Sea. Nevertheless, the two countries did hold multiple rounds of consultations on the proper management of disputes at sea. 13. China is committed to peacefully settling, through negotiations with countries directly concerned, territorial and jurisdictional disputes in the South China Sea in AC accordance with international law including the Convention. The Convention consists of 17 parts with 320 articles and 9 annexes, providing for rules regulating territorial sea and contiguous zone, straits used for international navigation, archipelagic states, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, high seas, regime of islands, enclosed or semi-enclosed seas, right of access of landlocked states to and from the sea and freedom of transit, the area, protection and preservation of the marine environment, marine scientific research, development and transfer of marine technology, settlement of disputes, and so on. Part 15 of the Convention deals with the settlement of disputes concerning the interpretation or application of the Convention. Land territorial matters are beyond the scope of the Convention, and the disputes thereabout beyond the scope of this dispute settlement. According to Article 298 of the Convention, state parties have the right to file a written declaration to exclude from compulsory dispute settlement procedures disputes concerning maritime delimitation, historic bays or titles, military and law enforcement activities, and disputes in respect of which the Security Council of the United Nations is exercising the functions assigned to it by the Charter of the United Nations. And China has excluded all such disputes from compulsory procedures under the Convention by filing a declaration in 2006 in AC accordance with Article 298 of the Convention. 2. Course of the South China Sea Arbitral Proceedings 14. On the 22nd of January 2013, the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of the Philippines presented a note verbal to the Embassy of the People's Republic of China in the Philippines, together with a notification and statement of claim, initiate an arbitral proceeding against China. For in its notification and statement of claim, the Philippines designated Ruyuro Digger Wolfham, a German national, as a member of the arbitral tribunal. 5. 15. In its notification and statement of claim, the Philippines sought an award that, 1, declares that the parties' respective rights and obligations in regard to the waters, seabed and maritime features of the South China Sea are governed by UNCLOS, and that China's claims based on its 9 dash line are inconsistent with the convention and therefore invalid, 2, determines whether, under Article 121 of UNCLOS, certain of the maritime features claimed by both China and the Philippines are islands, low tide elevations or submerged banks, and whether they are capable of generating entitlement to maritime zones greater than 12 m, and 3 enables the Philippines to exercise and enjoy the rights within and beyond its exclusive economic zone and continental shelf that are established in the Convention.6. 16. On the 19th of February 2013, China rejected and returned the Philippines' note verbal and the attached notification and statement of claim. 17. On the 23rd of March 2013, Shunji Ii, the then President of the International Tribunal of the Law of the Sea, ITLOS and a National of Japan, appointed Stanislav Polak, a National of Poland, 
as arbitrator. 18. On the 24th of April 2013, Shunji Anai appointed Jean-Pierre Cot, a national of France, and Alfred H. A. Soons, a national of the Netherlands, as arbitrators, and MCW Pinto, a national of Sri Lanka, as arbitrator and president of the tribunal. 19. On the 21st of May 2013, Pinto withdrew from the arbitral tribunal as a result of certain questions from the Philippines. 20. On the 21st of June 2013, Shunji Anai appointed Thomas A. Mensa, a national of Ghana, as arbitrator and president of the tribunal. 21. On the 28th of February 2014, the Philippines applied for leave to amend its statement of claim by adding a request to determine pursuant to the convention the status of Renai Giao, which the Philippines described as Second Thomas Shoal. 22. On the 11th of March 2014, the tribunal granted the requested leave and accepted the Philippines' amended statement of claim. 23. On the 30th of March 2014, the Philippines submitted its memorial and annexes thereto, presenting its 15 submissions.7. 24. On 7, 8, and the 13th of July 2015, the tribunal held two rounds of hearing on jurisdiction, with only the Philippines appearing and presenting its arguments. Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam were present as observers. 25. On the 29th of October 2015, the tribunal issued its award on jurisdiction. The dispositif stated that the tribunal, A finds that the tribunal was properly constituted in accordance with Annex VII to the convention. B finds that China's non-appearance in these proceedings does not deprive the tribunal of jurisdiction. C finds that the Philippines' act of initiating this arbitration did not constitute an abuse of process. D finds that there is no indispensable third party whose absence deprives the tribunal of jurisdiction. E finds that the 2002 China ASEAN SIC Declaration on Conduct of the Parties in the South China Sea, the joint statements of the parties referred to in paragraphs 231 to 232 of this award, the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia, and the Convention on Biological Diversity, do not preclude, under Articles 281 or 282 of the Convention, recourse to the compulsory dispute settlement procedures available under Section 2 of Part 15 of the Convention. F finds that the parties have exchanged views as required by Article 283 of the Convention. G finds that the Tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submissions number 3, 4, 6, 7, 10, 11, and 13, subject to the conditions noted in paragraphs 400, 401, 403, 404, 407, 408, and 410 of this award. H finds that a determination of whether the tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submissions number 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 12, and 14 would involve consideration of issues that do not possess an exclusively preliminary character and accordingly reserves consideration of its jurisdiction to rule on submissions number 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, 12, and 14 to the merit phase. I directs the Philippines to clarify the content and narrow the scope of its submission 15 and reserves consideration of its jurisdiction over submission number 15 to the merits phase. J reserves for further consideration and directions all issues not decided in this award. 8. 26. On 24, 25, 26, and the 30th of November 2015, the Tribunal held two rounds of hearing on the remaining issues of jurisdiction and admissibility in the merits, hearing on the merits, with only the Philippines appearing and presenting its arguments. Australia, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam were present as observers. 27. On the 30th of November 2015, the Philippines presented its 15 final submissions in writing, which had undergone several rounds of major amendments, 
requesting the tribunal to adjudge and declare that a the tribunal has jurisdiction over the claims set out in section b of these submissions which are fully admissible to the extent not already determined to be within the tribunal's jurisdiction and admissible in the award on jurisdiction and admissibility of the 29th of october 2015 b. 1. China's maritime entitlements in the South China Sea, like those of the Philippines, may not extend beyond those expressly permitted by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, or the Convention. 2. China's claims to sovereign rights jurisdiction, and 2. Historic rights with respect to the maritime areas of the South China Sea encompassed by the so-called Nine Dash Line are contrary to the Convention and without lawful effect to the extent that they exceed the geographic and substantive limits of China's maritime entitlements expressly permitted by UNCLOS. 3. Scarborough Shoal generates no entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf. 4. Mischief Reef, 2nd Thomas Shoal and Subi Reef are low tide elevations that do not generate entitlement to a territorial sea, exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, and are not features that are capable of appropriation by occupation or otherwise. 5. Mischief Reef and 2nd Thomas Shoal are part of the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines. 6. Gavin Reef and McKinnon Reef, including Hughes Reef, are low tide elevations that do not generate entitlement to a territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, or continental shelf, but their low water line may be used to determine the baseline from which the breadth of the territorial sea of Namut and Sinkao, respectively, is measured. 7. Johnson Reef, Guardaron Reef and Fiery Cross Reef generate no entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf. 8. China has unlawfully interfered with the enjoyment and exercise of the sovereign rights of the Philippines with respect to the living and non-living resources of its exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. 9. China has unlawfully failed to prevent its nationals and vessels from exploiting the living resources in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. 10. China has unlawfully prevented Philippine fishermen from pursuing their livelihoods by interfering with traditional fishing activities at Scarborough Shoal. 11. China has violated its obligations under the Convention to protect and preserve the marine environment at Scarborough Shoal, 2nd Thomas Shoal, Guadron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef and Subi Reef. 12. China's occupation of in construction activities on Mischief Reef a. Violate the provisions of the Convention concerning artificial islands, installations and structures b. Violate China's duties to protect and preserve the marine environment under the Convention and c. Constitute unlawful acts of attempted appropriation and violation of the Convention 13. China has breached its obligations under the Convention by operating its law enforcement vessels in a dangerous manner, causing serious risk of collision to Philippine vessels navigating in the vicinity of Scarborough Shoal. 14. Since the commencement of this arbitration in January 2013, China has unlawfully aggravated and extended the dispute by among other things, a. Interfering with the Philippines' rights of navigation in the waters at and adjacent to, Second Thomas Shoal, b. Preventing the rotation and resupply of Philippine personnel stationed at Second Thomas Shoal, c. Endangering the health and well-being of Philippine personnel stationed at Second Thomas Shoal, and d. Conducting dredging, artificial island building and construction activities at Mischief Reef, Guardaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef and Subi Reef, and 15. China shall respect the rights and freedoms of the Philippines under the Convention, shall comply with its duties under the Convention, including those relevant to the protection and preservation of the marine environment in the South China Sea, and shall exercise its rights and freedoms in the South China Sea with due regard to those of the Philippines under the Convention. 28. On the 12th of July 2016, the Tribunal rendered an award on the remaining jurisdictional issues and merits. The Tribunal first incorporated its award on jurisdiction and declared that it had jurisdiction to consider the matters raised by the Philippines in its submissions number 1 through 13, and 14d and that such claims were admissible, 
but that it had no jurisdiction to consider the Philippines' submissions now. 14A2C for their involving military activities, and with respect to the Philippines' submission number 15, there was not a dispute between the two states such as would call for the tribunal to exercise jurisdiction.10. The dispositif reads as follows. A. In relation to its jurisdiction, the tribunal 9101 finds that China's claims in the South China Sea do not include a claim to historic title within the meaning of Article 298 1AI of the Convention over the waters of the South China Sea and that the tribunal, therefore, has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submissions number 1 and 2, 2 finds, with respect to the Philippine submission number 5, a, that no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal constitutes a fully entitled island for the purposes of Article 121 of the Convention and therefore that no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal has the capacity to generate an entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, b. that Mischief Reef and 2nd Thomas Shoal are low tide elevations and, as such, generate no entitlement to maritime zones of their own. c. that there are no overlapping entitlements to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf in the areas of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal, and d. that the tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submission number 5, 3 finds, with respect to the Philippine submissions number 8 and 9, a. that no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal constitutes a fully entitled island for the purposes of Article 121 of the Convention and therefore that no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal has the capacity to generate an entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, b. that Mischief Reef and 2nd Thomas Shoal are low tide elevations and, as such, generate no entitlement to maritime zones of their own, c. that Reed Bank is an entirely submerged reef formation that cannot give rise to maritime entitlements, d that there are no overlapping entitlements to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf in the areas of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal or in the areas of the Philippines GSEC 101, Area 3, Area 4, or SC 58 Petroleum Blocks, e. that Article 297 3A of the Convention and the Law Enforcement Exception in Article 298 1B of the Convention are not applicable to this dispute, and f. that the Tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippines submissions number 8 and 9, 4 finds that China's land reclamation and or constructions of artificial islands, installations, and structures at Guadaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, Subi Reef, and Mischief Reef do not constitute military activities within the meaning of Article 298-1B of the Convention, and that the Tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submissions number 11 and 12-B-5 fines with respect to the Philippine submissions no. 12-A and 12-C, A. That no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal constitutes a fully entitled island for the purposes of Article 121 of the Convention and therefore that no maritime feature claimed by China within 200 nautical miles of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal has the capacity to generate an entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, b. That Mischief Reef and 2nd Thomas Shoal are low tide elevations and, as such, generate no entitlement to maritime zones of their own. c. That there are no overlapping entitlements to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf in the areas of Mischief Reef or 2nd Thomas Shoal, and d. That the Tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippines' submissions now. 12a and 12c. 6. Finds with respect to the Philippine submission number 14, a. That the dispute between China and the Philippines concerning the standoff between the Philippines Marine Tashment on 2nd Thomas Shoal and Chinese military and paramilitary vessels involves military activities within the meaning of Article 298 1b of the Convention, and that the Tribunal had no jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submissions now. 14a to c. 
and b. That China's land reclamation and or constructions of artificial islands, installations, and structures at Guadron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, Subi Reef, and Mischief Reef do not constitute military activities within the meaning of Article 298 1b of the Convention and that the tribunal has jurisdiction to consider the Philippine submission no. 14 d. 7 finds, with respect to the Philippine submission number 15, that there is not a dispute between the parties such as would call for the tribunal to exercise jurisdiction, and 8 declares that it has jurisdiction to consider the matters raised in the Philippine submissions number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 d and that such claims are admissible b in relation to the merits of the parties disputes the tribunal one declares that as between the philippines and china the convention defines the scope of maritime entitlements in the south china sea which may not extend beyond the limits imposed therein two declares that as between the philippines and china china's claims to historic rights or other sovereign rights or jurisdiction, with respect to the maritime areas of the South China Sea encompassed by the relevant part of the 9 dash line, are contrary to the Convention and without lawful effect to the extent that they exceed the geographic and substantive limits of China's maritime entitlements under the Convention, and further declares that the Convention superseded any historic rights, or other sovereign rights or jurisdiction, in excess of the limits imposed therein. 3. Fines, with respect to the status of features in the South China Sea, a. That it has sufficient information concerning tidal conditions in the South China Sea, such that the practical considerations concerning the selection of the vertical datum and tidal model referenced in paragraphs 401 and 403 of the Tribunal's Award on Jurisdiction and Admissibility of the 29th of October 2015 do not pose an impediment to the identification of the status of features, b. That Scarborough Shoal, Gavin Reef North, McCannon Reef, Johnson Reef, Guardaron Reef, and Fiery Cross Reef include, or in their natural condition did include, naturally formed areas of land, surrounded by water, which are above water at high tide, within the meaning of Article 121 of the Convention, c. That Subi Reef, Gavin Reef, South, Hughes Reef, Mischief Reef, and Second Thomas Shoal, are low tide elevations, within the meaning of Article 13 of the Convention, d. That Subi Reef lies within 12 nautical miles of the high tide feature of Sandy Kai, note by the author. This term refers to China's Tixi and Jiao on the reefs to the west of Fitu, e. That Gavin Reef, south, lies within 12 nautical miles of the high tide features of Gavin Reef, north, and Namut Island, and f. That Hughes Reef lies within 12 nautical miles of the high tide features of McCannon Reef and San Cao Island, 4, declares that, as low tide elevations, Mischief Reef and Second Thomas Shoal do not generate entitlements to a territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, or continental shelf and are not features that are capable of appropriation, 5, declares that, as low tide elevations, Subi Reef, Gavin Reef, South, and Hughes Reef do not generate entitlements to a territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, or continental shelf and are not features that are capable of appropriation, but may be used as the baseline for measuring the breadth of the territorial sea of high tide features situated at a distance not exceeding the breadth of the territorial sea. 6. Declares that Scarborough Shoal, Gavin Reef, North, McCannon Reef, Johnson Reef, Guardaron Reef, and Fiery Cross Reef, in their natural condition, are rocks that cannot sustain human habitation or economic life of their own, within the meaning of Article 121.3 of the Convention and accordingly that Scarborough Shoal, Gavin Reef, North, McCannon Reef, Johnson Reef, Guardaron Reef, and Fiery Cross Reef generate no entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, 7, finds with respect to the status of other features in the South China Sea a. That none of the high tide features in the Spratly Islands, in their natural condition, are capable of sustaining human habitation or
economic life of their own within the meaning of Article 1213 of the Convention, b. That none of the high tide features in the Spratly Islands generate entitlements to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf, and c. That therefore there is no entitlement to an exclusive economic zone or continental shelf generated by any feature claimed by China it would overlap the entitlements of the Philippines in the area of Mischief Reef and Second Thomas Shoal, and declares that Mischief Reef and Second Thomas Shoal are within the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines. 8. Declares that China has, through the operation of its marine surveillance vessels in relation to MV Veritas Voyager on 1 and the 2nd of March 2011 breached its obligations under Article 77 of the Convention with respect to the Philippines' sovereign rights over the non-living resources of its continental shelf in the area of Reed Bank. 9. Declares that China has, by promulgating its 2012 moratorium on fishing in the South China Sea, without exception for areas of the South China Sea falling within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines and without limiting the moratorium to Chinese flag vessels, breached its obligations under Article 56 of the Convention with respect to the Philippines' sovereign rights over the living resources of its exclusive economic zone. 10. Fines, with respect to fishing by Chinese vessels at Mischief Reef and Second Thomas Shoal, a. That, in May 2013, fishermen from Chinese flag vessels engaged in fishing within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone at Mischief Reef and Second Thomas Shoal, and b. That China, through the operation of its marine surveillance vessels, was aware of, tolerated, and fail to exercise due diligence to prevent such fishing by Chinese flag vessels, and c. That therefore China has failed to exhibit due regard for the Philippines' sovereign rights with respect to fisheries in its exclusive economic zone, and declares that China has breached its obligations under Article 58.3 of the Convention, 11. Finds that Scarborough Shoal has been a traditional fishing ground for fishermen of many nationalities and declares that China has, through the operation of its official vessels at Scarborough Shoal from May 2012 onwards, unlawfully prevented fishermen from the Philippines from engaging in traditional fishing at Scarborough Shoal. 12. Finds with respect to the protection and preservation of the marine environment in the South China Sea, a. that fishermen from Chinese flag vessels have engaged in the harvesting of endangered species on a significant scale, b. that fishermen from Chinese flag vessels have engaged in the harvesting of giant clams in a manner that is severely destructive of the coral reef ecosystem, and c. that China was aware of, tolerated, protected, and failed to prevent the AFORE mentioned harmful activities, and declares that China has breached its obligations under Articles 192 and 194 5 of the Convention. 13. Finds further, with respect to the protection and preservation of the marine environment in the South China Sea, a. That China's land reclamation and construction of artificial islands, installations, and structures at Guadaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, Subi Reef, and Mischief Reef has caused severe, irreparable harm to the coral reef ecosystem, b. That China has not cooperated or coordinated with the other states bordering the South China Sea concerning the protection and preservation of the marine environment concerning such activities, and c. That China has failed to communicate an assessment of the potential effects of such activities on the marine environment, within the meaning of Article 206 of the Convention, and declares that China has breached its obligations under Articles 123, 192, 194 1, 194 5, 197, and 206 of the Convention, 14, with respect to China's construction of artificial islands, installations, and structures at Mischief Reef, a finds that China has engaged in the construction of artificial islands, installations, and structures at Mischief Reef without the authorization of the Philippines, b. 
recalls, I, it's finding that mischief reef is a low tide elevation, 2, it's declaration that low tide elevations are not capable of appropriation, and, 3, it's declaration that mischief reef is within the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines, and C. declares that China has breached Articles 60 and 80 of the Convention with respect to the Philippines' sovereign rights in its exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. 15. Fines. With respect to the operation of Chinese law enforcement vessels in the vicinity of Scarborough Shoal, a. That China's operation of its law enforcement vessels on the 28th of April 2012 and the 26th of May 2012 created serious risk of collision and danger to Philippine ships and personnel and b. That China's operation of its law enforcement vessels on the 28th of April 2012 and the 26th of May 2012 violated rules 2, 6, 7, 8, 15, and 16 of the Convention on the International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, 1972, and declares that China has breached its obligations under Article 94 of the Convention, and 16 finds that during the time in which these dispute resolution proceedings were ongoing, China, A, has built a large artificial island on Mischief Reef, a low tide elevation located in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, B, has caused through its land reclamation and construction of artificial islands, installations, and structures severe, irreparable harm to the coral reef ecosystem at Mischief Reef, Guardaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, and Subi Reef, and C. has permanently destroyed through its land reclamation and construction of artificial islands, installations, and structures evidence of the natural condition of Mischief Reef, Guardaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, and Subi Reef, and finds further that China, D, has aggravated the parties' dispute concerning their respective rights and entitlements in the area of Mischief Reef. E. has aggravated the parties' dispute concerning the protection and preservation of the marine environment at Mischief Reef. F. has extended the scope of the parties' dispute concerning the protection and preservation of the marine environment to Guardaron Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Gavin Reef, North, Johnson Reef, Hughes Reef, and Subi Reef and G. has aggravated the party's dispute concerning the status of maritime features in the Spratly Islands and their capacity to generate entitlements to maritime zones, and declares that China has breached its obligations pursuant to Articles 279, 296, and 300 of the Convention, as well as pursuant to general international law, to abstain from any measure capable of exercising a prejudicial effect in regard to the execution of the decisions to be given and in general, not to allow any step of any kind to be taken which might aggravate or extend. The dispute during such time as dispute resolution proceedings were ongoing.11. 3. The position of the Chinese government regarding the arbitration. 29. China has repeatedly made clear its firm opposition to the Philippines' unilateral initiation of the arbitration and any action or step to push forward the proceedings, and its firm position not to accept or participate in the arbitration, in various diplomatic notes, letters, statements, position papers foreign ministry spokespersons' remarks and those made at regular press conferences. China returned all the documents from the tribunal and the Philippines. This clear position has been consistently adhered to. 30. On the 19th of February 2013, the Embassy of China in the Philippines, presenting a note verbal to the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines rejected and returned the Philippines note verbal no. 130211 dated the 22nd of January 2013 and the attached notification and statement of claim. China stated, The position of China on the South China Sea issues has been consistent and clear.
China has indisputable sovereignty over the Nanhai Islands and their adjacent waters. At the core of the disputes between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea are the territorial disputes over some islands and reefs of the Nansha Islands. The two countries also have overlapping jurisdictional claims over parts of the maritime area in the South China Sea. The direct cause of these disputes has been the illegal occupation by the Philippines of some islands and reefs of China's Nansha Islands. China has been firmly opposed to such illegal occupation. The territorial disputes between China and the Philippines are still pending and unresolved, but both sides have agreed to settle the disputes through bilateral negotiations. By initiating arbitration proceedings, the Philippines run counter to the agreement between the two countries, and also contravenes the principles and spirit of the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea DOC, and particularly, to resolve their territorial and jurisdictional disputes by peaceful means, through friendly consultations and negotiations by sovereign states directly concerned. The notification and statement of claim, hereinafter referred to as notification attached to note verbal no. 130211 contains grave errors both in fact and in law, and includes many false accusations against China. At some places, the notification even seriously violates the One China principle, undermining the political foundation of the bilateral relations between China and the Philippines. China firmly opposes to this. China therefore rejects and returns the Philippines note verbal number 130211 and the attached notification. China has been committed to resolving disputes peacefully through bilateral negotiation and has made every effort to maintain stability and to promote regional cooperation in the South China Sea. In March 2010, China made a formal proposal to the Philippines on establishing a bilateral regular consultation mechanism on maritime issues, and China has also repeatedly proposed to the Philippines to resume the operation of the Confidence Building Measures Mechanism CBMs, as established between the two countries. The Philippines has failed to respond to the proposals mentioned above. China hopes that the Philippines will revert to the right track of settling the disputes through bilateral negotiations. 1 2. 31. On 26 April 2013, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson answered questions on the Philippines' move to push for the establishment of the arbitral tribunal in relation to the disputes between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea, as follows. Since the 1970s, the Philippines, in violation of the Charter of the United Nations and principles of international law, illegally occupied some islands and reefs of China's Nansha Islands, including Mahu and Dao, Fix and Dao, Zhongyi Dao, Nanyao Dao, Baizi Dao, Shi Yu Dao, Zhuang Viang Sha Zuo and Soing Hia E. Firmly and consistently opposed to the illegal occupation by the Philippines, China hereby solemnly reiterates its demand that the Philippines withdraw all its nationals and facilities from China's islands and reefs. The Philippines professed in the notification of the 22nd of January 2013 that it does not seek a determination of which party enjoys sovereignty over the islands claimed by both of them. On the 22nd of January, however, the Philippines publicly stated that the purpose for initiating the arbitration was to bring to a durable solution the Philippines-China dispute in the South China Sea. These statements are simply self-contradictory. In addition, by initiating the arbitration on the basis of its illegal occupation of China's islands and reefs, the Philippines has distorted the basic facts underlying the disputes between China and the Philippines. In so doing, the Philippines attempts to deny China's territorial sovereignty and clothes its illegal occupation of China's islands and reefs with a cloak of legality. The Philippines attempt to seek a so-called durable solution such as this and the means it has employed to that end are absolutely unacceptable to China. In accordance with international law, and especially the principle of the law of the sea that land dominates the sea, determined territorial sovereignty is the precondition for, and basis of maritime delimitation. The claims for arbitration as raised by the Philippines are essentially concerned with maritime delimitation between the two countries and parts of the South China Sea, 
and thus inevitably involve the territorial sovereignty over certain relevant islands and reefs. However, such issues of territorial sovereignty are not the ones concerning the interpretation or application of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea UNCLOS. Therefore, given the fact that the Sino-Philippine territorial disputes still remain unresolved, the compulsory dispute settlement procedures as contained in UNCLOS should not apply to the claims for arbitration as raised by the Philippines. Moreover, in 2006, the Chinese government made the declaration in pursuance of Article 298 of UNCLOS, excluding disputes regarding such matters as those related to maritime delimitation from the compulsory dispute settlement procedures, including arbitration. Therefore, the request for arbitration by the Philippines is manifestly unfounded. China's rejection of the Philippines' request for arbitration, consequently, has a solid basis in international law. In the interest of maintaining the Sino-Philippine relations and the peace and stability in the South China Sea, China has been persistent in pursuing bilateral negotiations and consultations with the Philippines to resolve relevant disputes. It is a commitment undertaken by all signatories, the Philippines included, under the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea DOC, that disputes relating to territorial and maritime rights and interests be resolved through negotiations by sovereign states directly concerned therewith. The DOC should be implemented in a comprehensive and serious manner. China will adhere to the means of bilateral negotiations to resolve territorial and maritime delimitation disputes both in accordance with applicable rules of international law and in compliance with the spirit of the DOC.13.32. On 12 July 2013, the Tribunal issued Administrative Order No. 1, appointing the Permanent Court of Arbitration 14, PCA as registry, providing the Philippines and China with copies of the draft rules of procedure and declarations of acceptance and statements of impartiality and independence signed by each arbitrator, and inviting comments on the draft rules. By a note verbal dated the 29th of July 2013, China reiterated its position that it does not accept the arbitration initiated by the Philippines and therefore returns the letter addressed to the Ambassador of China to the Netherlands dated the 12th of July 2013 as well as the attached documents. China emphasized that its note verbal shall not be regarded as China's acceptance of or participation in the arbitration procedure. 33. On 7 December 2014, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs was authorized to release the position paper of the Government of the People's Republic of China on the matter of jurisdiction in the South China Sea arbitration initiated by the Republic of the Philippines. Position paper.15 On 8 December, the Chinese Embassy in the Netherlands delivered the position paper to the PCA together with a note verbal, requesting it to forward the position paper to Thomas A. Mensa. Jean Pierre Cott, Stanislav Polak, Alfred H. A. Soons, and Ruyuro Digger Wolfram. The note verbal included a reminder that the forwarding of the aforementioned position paper shall not be regarded as China's acceptance of or its participation in the arbitration. The position paper reiterates China's position of not accepting or participating in the arbitration and elaborates on the legal grounds for its position that the tribunal had no jurisdiction over the Philippines' submissions. The essence of the subject matter of the arbitration is the territorial sovereignty over several maritime features in the South China Sea, which is beyond the scope of the convention and does not concern the interpretation or application of the convention. China and the Philippines have agreed, through bilateral instruments and the declaration on the conduct of parties in the South China Sea, to settle their relevant disputes through negotiations. By unilaterally initiating the present arbitration, the Philippines has breached its obligation under international law, even assuming, arguendo, that the subject matter of the arbitration were concerned with the interpretation or application of the convention, that subject matter would constitute an integral part of maritime delimitation between the two countries, thus falling within the scope of the declaration filed by China in 2006 in accordance with the convention, which excludes, inter alia, disputes concerning maritime delimitation from compulsory arbitration and other compulsory dispute settlement procedures. Consequently, 
The arbitral tribunal manifestly has no jurisdiction over the present arbitration. Based on the foregoing positions and by virtue of the freedom of every state to choose the means of dispute settlement, China's rejection of a non-participation in the present arbitration stand on solid ground in international law.1634 on the 6th of February 2015, the ambassador of China to the Netherlands sent a letter to Thomas A. Mensa, Jean-Pierre Cott, Stanislav Polak, Alfred H. A. Soons, and Ruyero Digger Wolfram, stating in part, the position, already taken by the Chinese government, of not accepting or participating in the arbitration is clear and consistent. It is supported by sufficient legal evidence, and will not change. Based on its non-acceptance and non-participation position, China does not respond to or comment on any issue raised by the arbitral tribunal. This shall not be understood or interpreted by anyone in any sense as China's acquiescence in or non-objection to any and all procedural or substantive matters already or might be raised by the arbitral tribunal, nor shall it be capitalized upon as a basis for any and all procedural or substantive arrangements, Sugstions, orders, decisions or awards that the arbitral tribunal may make. The Chinese government underlines that China opposes the initiation of the arbitration and any measures to push forward the arbitral proceeding, holds an omnibus objection to all procedural applications or steps that would require some kind of response from China, such as intervention by other states, AMECUCE submissions and site visit. China firmly opposes any attempt to obstinately push forward the arbitral proceeding by taking advantage of its position of not accepting or participating in the arbitration. Any and all procedural or substantive arrangements, suggestions, orders, decisions or awards relating to China that the arbitral tribunal has made or may make in the future are null and void, and have no binding effect on China. An explicit consent of the parties is the prerequisite for international arbitration which shall also fully respect their will. Under the circumstances that China has stated its non-acceptance and non-participation position and elaborated that the arbitral tribunal manifestly has no jurisdiction, the relevant actors still continually push forward the arbitral proceeding and even attempt to apply other procedures which are inconsistent with the general practices of international arbitration such as intervention by other states and AMECUCE submissions. China is seriously concerned about and firmly opposes such moves.17.35 On the 1st of July 2015, the ambassador of China to the Netherlands wrote another letter to Thomas A. Mensa, Stanislav Polak, Jean-Pierre Cott, Alfred H. A. Soons, and Ruyero Digger Wolfram, stating that 1. It is the consistent policy and practice of the Chinese government to resolve the disputes related to territory and maritime rights and interests with states directly concerned through negotiation and consultation. On issues of territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests, China will not accept any imposed solution or any unilateral resorting to a third-party settlement. This is the legitimate right bestowed upon China by international law, including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS. The Chinese government adheres to the position of neither accepting nor participating in the arbitral proceeding with respect to the disputes between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea unilaterally initiated by the Philippines in disregard of China's aforesaid legitimate right and in breach of the agreement that has been repeatedly reaffirmed with China as well as the Philippines' undertakings in the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, DOC. 2. The attempt to resolve the disputes in the South China Sea by unilaterally initiating and pushing forward the arbitral proceeding will not only compromise the efforts by states directly concerned to resolve relevant disputes through negotiation and consultation, but also erode the confidence shared by China and ASEAN member states in jointly safeguarding peace and stability in the South China Sea. 3. The Chinese government's position in regard to the arbitration has been clearly elaborated in the position paper of the government of the People's Republic of China on the matter of jurisdiction in the South China Sea arbitration initiated by the Republic of the Philippines released on the 7th of December 2014 and the letter from me dated the 6th of February 2015. 
4. Based upon what is stated above, the Chinese government's relevant statements and documents as well as my letters, among others, shall by no means be interpreted as China's participation in the arbitral proceeding in any form. China opposes any move to initiate and push forward the arbitral proceeding, and does not accept any arbitral arrangements, including the hearing procedures.18. 36. On the 14th of July 2015, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the conclusion of the hearing on issues relating to jurisdiction and admissibility by the tribunal as follows. The Chinese government has, on many occasions, expounded its position of neither accepting nor participating in the arbitral proceeding unilaterally 18 letter from the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the individual members of the tribunal, the 1st of July 2015. Four, based upon what is stated above, the Chinese government's relevant statements and documents as well as my letters, among others, shall by no means be interpreted as China's participation in the arbitral proceeding in any form. China opposes any move to initiate and push forward the arbitral proceeding, and does not accept any arbitral arrangements, including the hearing procedures.18. 36. On the 14th of July 2015, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the conclusion of the hearing on issues relating to jurisdiction and admissibility by the tribunal as follows. The Chinese government has, on many occasions, expounded its position of neither accepting nor participating in the arbitral proceeding unilaterally. Initiated by the Philippines in disregard of China's legitimate rights bestowed upon her by international law, including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, and in breach of the agreement that has been repeatedly reaffirmed with China as well as the Philippines' undertakings in the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, DOC. This position is supported by sufficient legal evidences. And for more information, Please refer to the position paper of the Government of the People's Republic of China on the matter of jurisdiction in the South China Sea arbitration initiated by the Republic of the Philippines released last December. China opposes any move by the Philippines to initiate and push forward the arbitral proceeding. On issues of territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests, China will never accept any imposed solution or unilaterally resorting to a third-party settlement. China urges the Philippines to return to the right AP approach of resolving relevant disputes through negotiation and consultation as soon as possible. 37. On the 24th of August 2015, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the release of the transcript of the oral hearing on jurisdiction by the tribunal as follows. The Chinese side has consistently expounded its position of neither accepting nor participating in the South China Sea arbitration unilaterally initiated by the Philippines. This position is solidly grounded in international law and will not change. The Philippines' unilateral submission of the relevant disputes to compulsory arbitration, in breach of the consensus repeatedly reaffirmed with China as well as its undertaking in the DOC and in disregard of the fact that the core of the disputes between China and Philippines lies in the disputes over territorial sovereignty and the overlapping of maritime rights and interests, constitutes a violation of international law and abuse of international legal procedure and a severe infringement upon the legitimate rights that China enjoys as a sovereign state and a state party to the UNCLOS. The Philippines' unilateral initiation and obstinate pushing forward the arbitral proceeding in an attempt to negate China's territorial sovereignty in maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea and to pressure China into making compromises regarding the real Vant matters is not only a pipe dream and will lead to nothing, but also will jeopardize the integrity of the UNCLOS and seriously undermine the order of international maritime law. China urges the Philippines to respect China's right, which is endowed by international law, of choosing means of dispute settlement 
and return to the right track of resolving relevant disputes in the South China Sea through negotiations and consultations. 38. On the 30th of October 2015, a statement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China on the award on jurisdiction and admissibility of the South China Sea arbitration by the arbitral tribunal established at the request of the Republic of the Philippines was issued, which emphasized that the award on jurisdiction is null and void, and has no binding effect on China. 39. On the 25th of November 2015, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the tribunal's hearing on the merits, reiterating that the tribunal had no jurisdiction and that China would not accept or participate in the arbitration. The remarks emphasized, with regard to the issues of territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests, China will not accept any solution imposed upon it or any unilateral resort to a third-party dispute settlement. The Philippines attempt to negate China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea through arbitral proceeding will lead to nothing. 21. 40. On the 21st of December 2015, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the tribunal's making public the transcript of its hearing on the merits, reiterating China's position that it would neither accept nor participate in the arbitration. The spokesperson said, in the hearing, the Philippine side attempted to negate China's sovereignty over the Nansha Islands and deny the validity of the Cairo Declaration and the Potsdam Proclamation in disregard of historical facts, international law and international justice. It testifies to the fact that the South China Sea dispute between China and the Philippines is in essence a territorial dispute over which the arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction. It also shows that the so-called arbitration is a political provocation under the cloak of law aiming at negating China's sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea instead of resolving the dispute. It is the Chinese people rather than any other individuals or institutions that master China's territorial sovereignty. When it comes to issues concerning territorial sovereignty and maritime delimitation, China will not accept any dispute settlement approach that resorts to a third party. The Chinese side urges the Philippine side to cast aside illusions, change its course and come back to the right track of resolving disputes through negotiations and consultations. 22. 41. On the 20th of May 2016, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson commented on whether China and the Philippines had held any discussion on items in Philippines claim as follows. Before unilaterally initiating the arbitration in January, 2013, the Philippine government failed to have any consultation or negotiation with the Chinese side on relevant items, still less exhaust all the bilateral means for the settlement of disputes. The arbitration initiated by the Philippines falls short of UNCLOS requirement. It won't work and will lead nowhere. The Chinese side always maintains that disputes between China and the Philippines over the South China Sea could only be resolved through bilateral negotiation and consultation. All parties should encourage the Philippines to peacefully resolve disputes with China through negotiation based on consensus with China, the VOC and international law including UN Clause. 43. On the 3rd of June 2016, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson made remarks on the relevant issue about Taiping Dao as follows. China has indisputable sovereignty over the Nansha Islands and its adjacent waters, including Taiping Dao. China has, based on the Nansha Islands as a whole, territorial sea, exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. Over the history, Chinese fishermen have resided on Taiping Dao for years, working and living there, carrying out fishing activities, digging wells for fresh water, cultivating land and farming, building huts and temples, and raising livestock. The above activities are all manifestly recorded in Geng Lupu, Manual of Sea Roots, which was passed down from generation to generation among Chinese fishermen, as well as in many Western navigation logs before the 1930s. The working and living practice of Chinese people on Taiping Dao fully proves that Taiping Dao is an island which is completely capable of sustaining human habitation or economic life of its own.
The Philippines' attempt to characterize Taiping Dao as a rock exposed that its purpose of initiating the arbitration is to deny China's sovereignty over the Nansha Islands and relevant maritime rights and interests. This violates international law and is totally unacceptable. 243. On the 8th of June 2016, a statement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China on settling disputes between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea through bilateral negotiation was issued, which reiterated that China would not accept or participate in the arbitration, emphasizing that it is the common agreement and commitment of China and the Philippines to settle their relevant disputes in the South China Sea through bilateral negotiation. The statement reads, However, ever since its initiation of the arbitration, the Philippines has only later ally closed the door of settling the South China Sea issue with China through negotiation, and has, while turning its back on the bilateral consensus regarding managing differences, taken a series of provocative moves that infringed upon China's legitimate rights and interests to dramatic deterioration of China-Philippines relations as well as of the situation in the South China Sea. China is firmly opposed to the Philippines' unilateral actions. China adheres to the sullen position of non-acceptance of a non-participation in the arbitration, and will stay committed to settling the relevant disputes with the Philippines in the South China Sea through bilateral negotiation. 25. 44. On the 10th of June 2016, the ambassador of China to the Netherlands delivered to Thomas A. Mensah, Stanislav Polak, Jean-Pierre Cot, Alfred H. A. Soons, and Wu Euro Digger Wolfham a document produced by the Chinese Society of International Law entitled, The Tribunal's Award in the South China Sea Arbitration Initiated by the Philippines is Null and Void. The document reads, in the present arbitration, the tribunal does not have jurisdiction over any of the claims made by the Philippines. Its award on jurisdiction is groundless both in fact and in law, and is thus null and void. Therefore, any decision that it may make on substantive issues in the ensuing proceedings will equally have no legal effect. 26 The document points out that the tribunal's decision is full of errors in determination of fact and application of law, at least in the following six respects. First, the tribunal errs in finding that the claims made by the Philippines constitute disputes between China and the Philippines concerning the interpretation or application of the UNCLOS. Second, the tribunal errs in taking jurisdiction over claims which in essence are issues of sovereignty over land territory and are beyond the purview of the UNCLOS. Third, the tribunal errs in taking jurisdiction over claims concerning maritime delimitation which have been excluded by China from compulsory prose doors in line with the UNCLOS. Fourth, the tribunal errs in denying that there exists between China and the Philippines an agreement to settle the disputes in question through negotiation. Fifth, the tribunal errs in finding that the Philippines had fulfilled the obligation to exchange views regarding the means of dispute settlement with respect to the claims it made. Sixth, the tribunal's award deviates from the object and purpose of the dispute settlement mechanism under the UNCLOS and impairs the integrity and authority of the Convention. 27. 45. On the 12th of July 2016, a statement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China on the award of the 12th of July 2016 of the Arbitral Tribunal in the South China Sea arbitration established at the request of the Republic of the Philippines was issued. The statement declares that the Philippines' initiation of arbitration breaches the agreement between the two states, violates the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS and goes against the general practice of international arbitration, and that the arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction, and the award is null and void and has no binding force. T. He conduct of the arbitral tribunal and its awards seriously contravene the general practice of international arbitration, completely deviate from the object and purpose of UNCLOS to promote peaceful settlement of disputes, substantially impair the integrity and authority of UNCLOS, gravely infringe upon China's legitimate rights as a sovereign state and state party to UNCLOS, China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea.
shall under no circumstances be affected by those awards. China opposes and will never accept any claim or action based on those awards. 28. 46. On the 12th of July 2016, the Chinese government also issued a statement of the Government of the People's Republic of China on China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea, which reiterates China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea. 29. 47. On the 13th of July 2016, the Chinese government issued a white paper entitled, China adheres to the position of settling through negotiation the relevant dispute between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea, white paper. The white paper elaborates that Nanai Judao are China's inherent territory, traces the origin of the relevant disputes between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea demonstrates that China and the Philippines have reached consensus on settling their relevant disputes in the South China Sea, shows that the Philippines has repeatedly taken moves that complicate the relevant disputes, and reiterates China's policy on the South China Sea issue. The white paper re-emphasizes the Philippines' unilateral initiation of arbitration contravenes international law including the UNCLOS dispute settlement mechanism. The arbitral tribunal in the South China Sea arbitration established at the Philippines' unilateral request has, ab initio, no jurisdiction, and awards rendered by it are null and void and have no binding force. China's territorial sovereignty in maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea shall under no circumstances be affected by those awards. China does not accept or recognize those awards. T. He Philippines unilateral initiation of arbitration contravenes international law including the UNCLOS dispute settlement mechanism. The arbitral tribunal in the South China Sea arbitration established at the Philippines unilateral request has ab initio, no jurisdiction, and awards rendered by their null and void and have no binding force. China's territorial sovereignty in maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea shall under no circumstances be affected by those awards. China does not accept or recognize those awards. China opposes and will never accept any claim or action based on those awards. Three zero.